So this video is a little bit of a preface for the next few videos that follow. We're going to talk about the concept of a render engine. So right now when I'm looking at this, this is, this is how Maya, this is how the computer actually thinks of these models that we've been, that we've been working with, right? It thinks of them as a, a series of vertices and then those vertices make edges that connect together and those edges make faces um, which are those enclosed area of edges, right? It's just a bunch of numbers. It's a spreadsheet on a grid, right? Like of numbers of where each of these little dots are. And that's how the computer thinks of it. But we think of things visually. And so in order to see this in a more appealing way, we have to render it, right? And we'll use that term, like people use that term when they're talking about drawing as well. Like you render the image, right? You create an image. Um, and when we say rendering in here, we're really saying we're going to calculate the lighting, we're going to calculate the materials and the physical properties of these objects so we can see them. So this is how we can view our model. If I've, if I've pressed 4, we see it in the wireframe view. But if I hit 5 or even 6, we're seeing it in shaded view. And this is sort of the simplest render that we can get. It's also the worst. Like it, it's This is not pretty. Right? Um, you also should know that like, you know, the viewport is a type of renderer, but it's not very high quality because it has to be really fast, right? If we were calculating tons of light and shadows, transparency and all that stuff, we would barely be able to tumble around in here, if, if at all, right? If you watch the behind the scenes for Pixar movies and, and stuff like that, they talk about how you know, every frame took hours to render or days to render, right? And that's because the more we calculate, the more detail we have to calculate, the slower it's going to go. The thing that is calculating it and putting that all together is the render engine. And the render engine that's driving the viewport is called Viewport 2.0. And so that's, it's not a particularly great render engine, but there's a couple of things we can do to make it look a little prettier in here while we're working. Uh, one of the things we can do is click this button here. This is the multi-sampling anti-aliasing. And it kind of smooths out the edges a little bit so we can see it a little bit more clearly. Uh, we can also even click this button right here. And that gives us uh, ambient occlusion. That's the areas where um, it's not really a shadow, but it's where two edges touch. Um, the light doesn't bounce into those areas quite as well. Um, and so we can do stuff like that. And if we had textures and lights in here, we could click a couple of these other buttons to get a little bit of a better version of this. But really, this is about as good as it's going to look in Viewport 2.0. So that brings up the question of what, how are we going to render this? And so from the first project, you'll remember we used Arnold uh, to render our project. So let's look at our render engines that exist. So this is Arnold's web page, and again, this is this is some of the stuff that it's capable of. You can do some really impressive looking renders out of Arnold. Arnold comes natively with um, Maya, and it's capable of photorealistic rendering. It's a great render engine. By default, though, Arnold is a software render engine. It means it's using calculations through your, through your CPU in order to get these images, right? And so that can be a little bit slower at times. So there's another render engine that we're going to be playing with here, and that is called um, Redshift. Uh, I bring this one up. This is not required, but I'm going to be teaching these next few videos in both Arnold and Redshift. And the reason for that is because Redshift is a GPU renderer which means it is much faster. Um, Arnold actually has some GPU capabilities that they've been adapting, and we may talk a little bit about that in order to like speed up your renders, things you can do in there. Um, but a GPU renderer is going to use your graphics card. And so if you have a gaming computer with a strong graphics card, it'll allow you to render much faster. Now, if you're working in the labs at ETSU, Arnold and Redshift should be installed on that. If you're working remotely or working from somewhere else, Arnold should come with Maya. But if you want to use Redshift, you would, you would actually have to buy it. And so I'll show you some of the, the images that are coming out of Redshift. Like they're very, very nice renders, like comparable to, to Arnold. Um, like they look great. Uh, if you did want to buy it, and you go to buy, 
you can see under the educational pricing here um, for students is about it's a, this is in euros but it's a, it's sixty dollars a year so if you would like to use redshift from home um, you're welcome to do that it's just going to cost you sixty dollars a year to do it and it's it's kind of worth it uh, but again this is not a requirement I just want to show you how to use both tools interestingly though once you understand how to use one tool it's pretty easy to convert over to the other so just letting you know that I'll be showing you sort of the same processes in both of these two softwares we'll, we're going to uh, do some image based lighting and some materials in both of them and then you can choose which one you want to use so